President Trump is at odds with some state governors over how and when to get the country safely back up and running again. Over 40,000 Americans have died nationwide from the coronavirus since the pandemic began. That number is nearly double what it was a week ago. There are now more than 759,000 cases. Yet despite the growing numbers, patience is wearing thin in some parts of the country. Thousands of Americans are taking to the nation's streets in protest of stay-at-home orders. And now questions are being raised over exactly who is behind some of these demonstrations. Meanwhile, several states have announced plans to ease some social distancing restrictions. Skylar Henry has more on the federal response. Well, good afternoon, everyone. Vice President Pence is headed to FEMA headquarters today, where he will video conference with the nation's governors. We'll be providing all the nation's governors and all of their uh, health officials with detail about the testing infrastructure that exists all around the country. But coronavirus testing has become a point of friction between the White House and the governors, as President Trump says it's up to the states to get testing up to speed. And testing is, is local. You can't have it both ways. Testing is a local thing. To try to uh, push this uh, off to say that the governors have plenty of testing and they should just get to work on testing. Somehow we aren't doing our job. It's just absolutely false. Governors say there needs to be a coordinated federal response to get needed supplies. I can't do an international supply chain. And that's where the federal government has to help because no state can do that. The White House and congressional Democrats both say they are close to a deal on a new financial relief package that will include more money for testing. But the majority of the money will go to small businesses with an additional $300 billion for the loan program designed to keep employees on the payroll during the pandemic response. That program has been incredibly successful. It's kept workers connected to their firms and made it so that as governors start to decide to open up their economies, that the people be in place to do that. The Senate could try to pass the package with a voice vote this afternoon. Skyler Henry, CBS News, the White House. CBS News White House correspondent Weijia Zhang joins me now. Hi, Weijia. So it's pretty clear that testing remains the limiting factor in nearly every facet of our response to the coronavirus. The AP reports the U.S. is, quote, struggling to test enough people to track and control the spread of the novel coronavirus, a crucial first step to reopening parts of the economy. So, we don't, where does the administration believe the country stands when it comes to testing capabilities? Well, President Trump continues to tout how much the country can test. He says millions and millions are available, and that's why he continues to say the capacity is there, and that's what people should focus on. But governors say the capacity is one thing. The potential to test is one thing. But they are begging the federal government and the president for some leadership to get the test kits and the supplies needed to actually perform the test. And so uh, yesterday, the president said he was going to use the Defense Production Act to compel one company, so far unnamed, the White House has not told us who, but he says one company will be essentially forced to produce testing swabs to hand out to the state so they can uh, perform those tests. But governors say a lot of other supplies are needed as well, such as reagents, which are a critical chemical to finish the process, and test tubes and plates. And so it's not just about how much you could test, it's about how much you can physically get done based on the supplies that are on hand. And remember, the entire world is competing for these same supplies. And so other countries are putting in bids as well. And that's why these states are so desperate for some sort of leadership to make uh, it easier for those resources to get to the U.S. and get to their states. Right. And we do the other crucial component to this pandemic is, of course, the economic fallout. Lawmakers are expected to announce a deal today that would allocate extra money to help small businesses. What more can you tell us about this? Well, the administration, including President Trump, is very optimistic that that agreement will be wrapped up today. And we're hearing uh, from sources on Capitol Hill that they are close, but they are also uh, still working out some of the fine print and the details because Republicans wanted to just add on more emergency funding to the small business loans that were already approved in the previous stimulus package. Remember, it was about $350 billion that went just like that. In two weeks, it was all gone. And there's still a backlog of businesses from around the country that are waiting 
waiting to get their applications cleared. And so this new deal will add about $300 billion on top of that. But Democrats said, wait a minute, we want to make sure that hospitals get funding as well and that there's more money set aside for that critical testing. And so that's what they're working out right now, in addition to some details about how the money will be allocated. Because as we saw during the first round, um, some bigger businesses got money, like Shake Shack, that ultimately returned it. Ruth's Chris, Pop Belly, these are big corporations compared to the smaller mom and pop shops. Uh, many of which did not get a penny of that aid the first time around. Right. Um, and we do, of course, lest we forget, President Trump is also running a re-election campaign through all of this. Does the president view stoking division among states as perhaps a political opportunity for him? Well, you know, remember, these are uh, Democratic governors as well as Republican governors who he is criticizing. Um, but certainly, I think one question, back to what we were talking about with the testing, is why there's any kind of reluctance to really take ownership of testing and give Americans the peace of mind that they are craving to know exactly where the virus is so they can enter back into the workforce and stimulate the economy with widespread testing testing in the way that the president wants. And some critics have suggested it's because the president wants a scapegoat. He wants somebody to blame uh, during the campaign in case there is a resurgence like we are expecting. And if he puts that responsibility of widespread testing into the state's hands and something goes wrong, then he has another political argument to make with regard to trying to control this virus. Um, but I can tell you, Tanya, that even though he's not officially campaigning, these briefings are starting to feel more and more like a rally. Um, just yesterday is a perfect example. The president spoke for about 40 minutes, um, bashing his political rivals, the media, talking about all of his accomplishments without even mentioning um, how many people are suffering from the virus and how many people have died from the virus. And so, um, you know, he has a, a a, a political plan here as well that you can't really deny, especially when you're watching it unfold and you've been to rallies before like I have. There's certainly a lot of similarities in what he is doing at these briefings and what we have seen there before. Um, but definitely the campaign and the White House has their eyes on November 2020. All right. Well, Weijia Jang at the White House, we thank you so much for that. Thanks.